Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas, Rich! That's right, Mike. It's Christmas time, one of the most important best of the worst episodes of the year. And to make sure this one was extra special, I have spent the last two months painstakingly screening every holiday movie we have so I could find the worst ones. And let me tell you, Mike, it was f***ing miserable. But it was worth it in the end because I got some doozies here. I've got, I've got a Hobo's Christmas, Candy Claws, the Santa Surprise, I watched Christmas Train, the Kudzu Christmas, I've got, I've got Jack Frost 2. You watched all of these? I watched all these. I even watched Hercules Rectectas Vinox Slash Vest. Uh. <laughs> you can't tell what they're saying because it's in German. And that makes it funny. We're not doing any Christmas films this year. What? We're just doing three canon movies. I'm so, so sorry you wasted so much of your time. You just picked three movies. You didn't even screen them or anything. You just... No, and you skipped all those chemo treatments, too. I didn't have time. I didn't ask you to. I mean, you gotta check your email, bro. Oh, no. That was our only copy of Elf Bowling. this fucking crap out of here. All right, now that we've got all that crap out of the way, we can start reading the boxes of the movies we're actually gonna watch. You get, you, oh, you get to pick? The stocking's for me. I wonder which of the three movies we know we're gonna watch Mike is gonna get. It's just like some holiday. Why, it's Avenging Force starring Michael Dudikoff. This isn't Christmas, this is fake miss. What dirt did Michael Dudikoff have on canon films? Because they kept trying to push him as like an action star. And he's just Michael Dudikoff. He knew the secret, the dark secret behind their business. They made cheap movies to turn a profit. Uh, Michael Dudikoff's style is reminiscent of a young Clit Eastwood. The New York Times. Uh-huh. A deadly conspiracy of right-wing lunatic fringe killers slaughtered his friends and family. Oh my god, friends and family. A whole bunch of people. Couldn't they just slaughter him? Well, maybe he wasn't there. <laughs> now, there's only one way for Michael Dudikoff, American Ninja, to survive. He must unleash the power, cunning, and fury of the Avenging Force. So the, the fact that there's a the make, makes it sound like it's a team of people, right? The, or, like the Avengers, the Avenging Force. Or it's like a power he has within him to avenge. Right, like a spiritual power, like, yeah. That, I mean, it does just show him, like, all by himself with a crossbow. It's probably just going to be him running around in the woods, killing people randomly. Matt Hunter... Dudikoff, that's his character's name, ah. Matt Hunter, is an ex-Secret Service agent trying to protect his best friend. Wait, he's trying to protect his best friend? Not a, uh, wait, 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 wait. They didn't get all of his friends they and family. They didn't get all of his friends? His best friend survived. He has so many friends. <laughs> he's a very likable man. Very affable. Look at this handsome man. If he's so likable, why would somebody want to kill all of his friends and family? Uh, his best friend from a super secret, so many secrets, Band of political terrorists known as the Pentangle. Pentagle? The ruthless organization torches his ranch and kidnaps his little sister. They didn't get all the family and... <laughs> they had to do a couple of passes, you know? Um, so it's like a process. It's a process. He has so many friends and family that <laughs> they have to do many passes to, before they kill them all, just because. Hunter is forced in the Pentangle's Barbaric manhunt played out in the remote swamplands of Louisiana. So we got a little most dangerous game situation going here. A hard target, a little bit of hard target. It's the ultimate game of cat and mouse as Hunter employs an awesome array of martial arts skills in his desperate fight for survival and revenge. This sounds like the ultimate action movie, whatever. 
It's just all the th hey, he killed his family friends, and also he's got to protect his best friend, and I, I kidnapped his sister, uh, hunting him down in Louisiana, dangerous game style, CIA crime. Hitler was right. Man was a visionary. It's like, like bingo, you know. <laughs> what do we got? What do we got? Pull it all out of a hat. The shotgun approach to action movie writing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, it's a canon film and it's directed by Sam Furstenberg, so there's two, two pluses right there. And has Michael Dudikoff in it. This is Lastenberg movie. And here's a little fancy dinner party. So we're not just in the woods. These are bad, the, the bad guys. Uh, there's going to be some kind of bad boss that he's going to go to his mansion at the end and throw him off the roof of the mansion. <laughs> right? Mean, roof of the mansion or full body experience? I'm out of here. Okay. Should I, should I go too? Mad Hunter. We are the Fantangle Hunting Fraternity. You've been looking for us, I believe. Oh! Oh, oh my God! Oh my God! God. Oh. 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 Are those real people? <laughs> I think the kid was a dummy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So what are we gonna do? What we always do. Improvise. Improvise. Funny if they both said different things. <laughs> <laughs> Make the plan. Improvise. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> this is like perfect, perfect okay, comedic start. beat for that to happen there. Should I read the back of the box to Hercules Rectech von Wiener Schnack? No! We're opening my stocking now. Oh my god, it's the Barbarians! Oh my god, it's two buff dudes! It's David Paul and Peter Paul. They're the Barbarian twins. They became celebrities called the Barbarian Twins because of this film, The Barbarians. <laughs> Stars of the famous films, Twin Sitters and Other. Starring Michael Berryman. Oh, oh. Yeah. We can tell Michael's Michael Berryman story. <laughs> it's the Christmas tradition now. <laughs> Gather around the fireplace <laughs> and listen to Mike awkwardly try to remember something that happened to him. <laughs> the Unstoppable Barbarian Brothers, seen recently in The Flamingo Kid and DC Cab, pit their awesome brawn and their equally unbelievable sense of humor against the fantastic perils of a violent, primeval world steeped in magic and ruled by the sword. Captured as youths, the identical twins, Gore and Kuchek, are transformed into bestial, gladiatorial fighting machines. Escaping the putrid death pits of the evil tyrant, Kadar, the twins set off <laughs> on a fabulous quest to rescue their ravishing queen, vanquish a mythical bog dragon, and recover the magical ruby of life. A wild, double-bladed romp into a fantasy adventure so outrageous, it takes two heroes to handle it. Oh God, that's them. Can, can I just say, I love fantasy names because you have normal English like we're speaking and then you just have somebody called Gorgrox. Yeah, just put a, a combination of letters together and you get Gore and Kuchek. Gore Kuchek, the emulsifator. Versus Kadar. <laughs> All right, let's watch it. It says on the front, the, the tagline is warriors, conquerors, heroes. Here should be with like a question mark. <laughs> If it's a comedy, that'd be great. <laughs> Their helmets are gonna fall off. They're gonna look into each other's yeah, eyes. Yeah, yeah. We're brothers. Let's have sex. <laughs> <laughs> They're not the McNamaras. Oh. <laughs> my stocking threw it out 
Hey, mine. Breaking and breaking two electric boogaloo. Let's just do the breaking two. We're, we're skipping. We're skipping breaking one. We're gonna skip breaking one. Just go to breaking two. Sure, why not? Okay, even though we're skipping breaking, uh, the beat doesn't slow down for the slam and sequel, Breaking Two Electric Boogaloo. A hip hop homage to the Hey Kids, let pu Let's Put On The Show musicals of Hollywood's yesteryear. This fly follow up finds our heroes, Ozone and Turbo. Uh, <laughs> what but, is this, uh, American Gladiators? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're all aware of the effects of the sun. I expect the Barbarian Brothers to come out like American Gladiator outfits and start breakdancing with names like that. <laughs> well, they come out uh, in, rescue, uh, in rescue of a community center facing demolition at the hands of a greedy real estate developer, featuring even more fancy footwork than the original film. Breaking Two Electric Boogaloo is unquestionably the greatest film title of all time. In the history of, of film and storytelling, has there ever been a heroic property developer? Anybody who builds a McDonald's. I guess... <laughs> I don't know, that shit's delicious. <laughs> Electric Boogaloo! supposed to get a hot chest from wearing this? Might be wired wrong. You lost your edge. You're the loser, punk. <coughs> Try me. <gasps> yes. <laughs> there it goes. Dance off. Everything just leads to a dance off. But this Drip dance off. <laughs> <laughs> who decides who wins the dance off? You'll see. It looks like they're all a, just having fun together now. It's an artistic interpretation of them fighting in dance form. Okay. I think it's not meant to be taken literally. <laughs> I think. everybody oh what a wonderful christmas this year will be nothing puts me in the christmas spirit more than gross drizzly rain mm -hmm. <laughs> filming this on a very rainy day you... windy blustery That's gross yeah. Just gross yeah. not like magical snow would you rather have four feet of fucking snow i i not four feet but i would rather have some snow well how about four feet of snow like but after it's been maintained. Yeah, by I, like, the city. I like a lot it's of like snow when I don't have to deal after with it. Four feet of sure. dumpage. Sure. I prefer snow to mud. December is the month of gray skies and human misery. December is the most miserable month, which is why, which is why we've just stuck this artificially cheery holiday yeah. near yeah. the end of it. Yeah. Just, just so more more people don't kill themselves in December. Okay. <laughs> Put lights up. Get your vitamin D. Whatever distraction you need, mm -hmm. yeah. That's, that's why to take our mind off of this miserable month, we have now done our, our second traditional canon Christmas best of the worst episode. Rich is hosting. Yeah. He's grabbing the hosting rings. This rarely happens. Well, have, it's, it's, a, it's a very special holiday. He's got the Christmas spirit in him. I have to grab the host reins because I didn't pick anything out of these socks. It's true. You, it's you true. fuckers did. But you are the one that in years past has been, why aren't we doing another canon Christmas episode? I, because, you we know. Had a, we had a wonderful time. The first time we did it, we watched Death Wish 3. And I don't remember a single other thing we watched. Uh, our first movie today 
is avenging force. And Mike, you, you didn't pick the side of the stocking. So Yeah, I did. We had a couple Our of first of two Sam Furstenberg movies. First of he, two. He was first and last tonight. What do we call the second one? Middleburger. Uh, directed by <laughs> someone else. Secondberg? I don't know. <laughs> well, we had the choice between a couple of different canon action films that were placed inside my stocking. Uh, I went with this because the premise sounded a little more out there than the other action movies. And, uh, you know what's funny about tonight? What? <laughs> um, is that all three movies were, were adequately good for what they were. They were um, easily talked through. I mean, it, you, you could pay attention, yes. but carry on conversation. Yeah, you and perk like up just when something exciting happens. Like, oh. yeah. Thin on plot. Uh, 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 this one stars Michael Dudikoff. <laughs> Um, American Ninja. <laughs> he's got the personality of a ream of paper. Yet, yet he starred in multiple canon action films. Canon was really trying to push him. I think it was a case of like, they'd look at their scripts and be like, wow, we can't put Charles Bronson in everything. Mm -hmm. And Charles Bronson cannot do uh, kicking. If, if I had to guess, if I, like, I have no idea, if I had to guess, he probably started off as like Chuck Norris' stunt double. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good guess. It's a real good guess. They yeah. said, take that fake mustache off that man and make him the lead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we could do it for a third of the price. Yes, yeah, that's probably a part of it too. Now wait, I, I, stop, I, I gotta stop myself here for one moment. Oh, okay. Because skimming the, 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 uh, the, the description, I, I forgot about one really important part, uh, production value. They put a lot of money into this, and I, I got to give them a little credit for that. The movie takes place in New Orleans. Also, New Orleans. Also known as New Orleans. Mm. New Orleans. There's still too many syllables. New Orleans. Mm. Us Milwaukeeans trying to sound from like we're from New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. I'm going to get me a po, po boy sandwich and down in New Orleans and some fried craw daddy lobster fish. Uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit of that I'm French the, Creole. I guarantee. French Creole jambalaya <laughs> fried craw daddy po boy fish down in New Orleans. <laughs> With some blackened shrimp rice, crawdaddy, po' boy, French, French beignet sandwich. That seems very rich. I really, yeah, <laughs> they, they have a big, big appetite down in your woman's. But a big appetite for pots filled with tons of different things. It's just fish and oh, throw it all in. Crustaceans. A base. Yeah. Is it, is it a is it a is it a bug or a fish or I don't throw it in a pot. <laughs> I'll eat it in a brothel. Yeah. But you, you set your action movie in New Orleans, Louisiana, and and we see a forest on the back, and we're like, oh no, they're just gonna go in the forest. What's New Orleans famous for? The bayous, swamps, Mardi Gras and excessive crime. Oh no, look at all these babies. Baby pickup time. <laughs> Everybody grab your babies. Something bad's gonna happen. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. They shot Bubba. Jesus. Oh, yes. They're killing everybody. So this that is whole not, town was his friends. This is not shooting the rodeo. Yeah, they filmed they filmed the rodeo. They shot the rodeo. They filmed some stuff, got some cutaways, and then kind of recreated a chunk of it for their shootout. Sure, I mean and that we makes were, sense. And we were like, whoa, extras, squibs. You know, they they they, they did a lot with this. We watch a lot of of low budget movies that are just you know wannabe Hollywood movies, and like I, I think the thing that defines a canon movie is just. They transcend that a bit. The, the, the effort. Yeah. You know, it's the same kind of B movie schlock, but but goddamn, they they give it their all to make these B movies feel like A movies. We're not just gonna have characters shoot at each other for 15 minutes and that's our action scene. They're gonna shoot at each other, then run to a new location and shoot at each other some more, and then run up a ladder and shoot at each other some more, and then someone's fallen off that building. <laughs> Go flying off the thing. Somebody's gonna get knocked off a roof. Possibly both of them. <laughs> Look, he's right on the edge. Come on. Yeah! yeah! Oh. 
I'm a little disappointed it wasn't a dummy. Ooh, oh, that, that's a it. fun shot. <laughs> I saw you knock that guy off the roof. <laughs> Good job. In, a, in an other movie, this just would have been people walking around in the woods on a yeah. normal best of the worst night, and it would have been fucking awful. But here, you got a fucking car chase that ends up in a warehouse by a dock, and then three people get knocked off of a giant scaffolding, and they fall 100 feet into the ocean. And, 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 and not to mention the, the premise, the brutality of the premise. Michael Dudikoff plays ex-CIA agent... Mike Hunter. Matt Hunter. Matt Hunter, Matt Hunter. Hunter was Matt his Hunter. name. Matt, Matt Hunter. Hunter. And he has his best friend is a black guy who's a running politician. politician who's running for st Senate. The villains of the film are the Pentagle. 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 Pen Pentangle. Pentangle. The Pentaveret. It's a five fingered organization called the Pentangle run by M man. Old, old man. Old man. And his second in command is Goldicott, who should have been the main henchman, because goddamn, that man is a great villain. Y yes, yes. Well said. You know who he is? That's Glastonbury? You should trademark that saying. Whatever you just said, just trademark it. Glastonbury. He's Glastonbury the bad guy. Glastonbury is the bad He's guy. The gimp, a.k.a. Um, the butch man, bald butch man with the mustache. And yep. then there's um, younger man. I yeah, don't know. The Don Johnson look. Don Johnson look like yeah. other um, guy. But the important part is they're members of a group that is like xenophobic, racist. They don't they don't like minorities. They're like America. They're the most racist. They're, they're super the most racist. racist people you've ever met. They're um, absolutely disgusting human beings. Americans. They call us paranoid because we love our country. Rioting in the streets of our cities. Civil disorder everywhere. Dope, crazed savages, gangs of rapists, sniveling politicians. This movie should have been called Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> they should just copy this text for like a Trump speech. Yeah. <laughs> Pump it through the teleprompter just to see if he reads it. He'll just read it. Like, uh, uh, Ron Burgundy. So, they kill... Uh, Michael Dukoff's friend who's running for Senate. I don't remember his name. Well, they don't kill no, him. No, they just shoot up his son first. Oh, yeah, well, Something Richard. Yeah, Baba uh, the tractor driver. A whole bunch of bad shit happens to him and his wife and his little kids, and it's it's really bad. One of his kids gets shot, and you're like, oh my god, this movie just killed a child. During the Mardi Gras parade. During the Mardi Gras parade. older child. And there's Willis and Arnold. He's got <laughs> Willis got shot. Yeah, when Willis gets shot first. Got... That's the inciting incident for the whole movie. And I was like, oh, okay, this is pretty brutal. They're murdering a child, but that's what you need to make us hate our villains. Mm -hmm. And that's the kickoff for the whole film. Little did we know that as the movie would go on, it would get more and more violent and cruel and brutal towards this poor family. Oh, man, does it ever. We Yeah, we have some middling action in the middle of the movie, and then we have the most glorious action scene. Well, their original house in New Orleans, uh, in, in like the downtown area, gets gets graffitied up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah and it gets yeah. a swastika or two on it. It's some racist stuff. Spelling racism. And then they say, we well, yeah. have to move you to this secure farmhouse, and we're going to have like FBI or CIA guys like pr protecting you and your family. We promise they won't get distracted by soup. Getting a little chilly outside. Hot soup on the stove. Oh, oh my God! God. Soup. Woo! Oh! Whoa. Dang! It was a straight up grenade. Ah. Uh, they shoot the senator in the leg with an arrow. They set the house on fire. They kill all the security guards. Uh, they shoot his wife in the barn, like just off camera. She's just like, oh no, no, don't. Yeah, yeah. yeah I wasn't expecting. Oh, she spits these... at him. She spits yeah. at him. Oh, oh, damn. Jesus. Whoa, whoa. The most heroic death of all time, even though it doesn't work out in the end, when he, he goes back into the house, he's shot with a fucking arrow in his back, and he still goes in to save his child. His child is up on like the third floor, yeah. so he yep. gets to the second floor, and then the stairs collapse. I, I can't go any further. It's now on you, Michael Dudikoff. Yeah. And then Michael Dudikoff oh just my God. fucks up. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh my God! Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Man, that kid. Oh, oh my God! Jesus Christ! 
Yeah. At least his boring sister is alive. Yeah. So he, they did kill his family and friends. Yeah, it happened. Well, he he goes outside. He's on the roof. And then him and a dummy version of that child just fall oh, off that no. goddamn roof. That kid would have been dead oh, right there. Because he got shot through the leg, too. Yeah. Yes. That, that kid would yeah. have been dead. Because they, they smack into the roof, oh, yeah. and then they yeah. smack into the porch, and then they smack onto the ground. The kid and that was the buffer. That kid is just fine until they shoot and can murder him. He gets put out of his misery. Do a cop. <laughs> Dude, well, he get, probably broke every bone in his body. Falling. He got more fucked up than, uh, than, than Z Z Z Zoops. Who's Zoops? What are you talking about? Electric Boogaloo. Gooba and Zoops. What were their two names? <laughs> what were the two? Turbo! <laughs> and Turbo Ozone. 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 <laughs> Whichever character fell down all the, the concrete Turbo. steps. That was Turbo. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he got more Trist. fucked up. He was probably end up in the hospital like Turbo with all of his broken limbs in a, in a thing. Th there would be no dancing for that kid, And though. Michael Dudikoff got an arrow in the leg and pulled it out and said, Sorry, kid, I'm out of here. <laughs> My leg hurts a little. Oh, my oh God. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> Shit got dark. Too far. <laughs> uh, there's uh, a, a, a daughter, a sister, uh, a sister. His younger a sister. sister. So yeah. Dudikoff, his sister daughter, his should daughter. have been his daughter. Yeah, or his wife. I'm looking for a girl, 12 years old. But she loves making coffee, and and, and then well, that she's old like, man tells her to make coffee in the car. <laughs> now pull my give me some coffee right when we go over those railroad tracks. <laughs> I swear, I, I, should, I, know I should have finished the dishes. Is there a way to after we cross the railroad tracks? Do you remember when Grandpa got blown up by a grenade? So th then we get to the, the, the last trope of this, which is almost just randomly tacked on to everything else this movie does, which is the most dangerous game. Yeah, well, that's kind of like what the back of the box alludes to. So we're like, oh, this is going to be one of those movies. Right. Hard target. Uh, Apex, uh, the the famous movie Apex, Apex. with Bruce Willis, film, De Deadly Prey, film. Deadly Prey. We're like they're gonna wander around the woods, but yeah, it's only the final act of the movie. But here's the here's the thing though, and it probably made this twenty times harder for them to film. They had it fucking raining. Yeah, through which, the whole thing. Which, despite the fact that they're filming in the woods, made it seem not cheap. Yeah, and visually interesting. Yeah. Well, it made it feel more like, yeah, dangerous. Like they're they're not just fighting; they got to slip around in the bayou. They make a mention of like, oh, alligators. They go, they come, they go crazy when it's raining. Looks like a storm's brewing, boy. Rain brings the gators out. Which they don't really pay off because there's never an alligator. Yeah, I thought one was going to come out of the water. I was, waiting for, quick I was waiting for Michael Dudikoff to have a shot fist fight with an yeah. alligator. Yeah. Yeah. Given this movie, the, given the production company and the budget, I don't know if they had a rain machine or if it was really raining out. But It's they, raining for a good majority of it where I think they would have to have a rain machine because that was filming over like days. This is like suck up the water on the ground and shoot it up in the air. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Because oh, everyone's up to their like that. knees in you just, water. You just yeah. put one end of the hose into the swamp, Mike. I, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's just yeah. it. It's like, then you gotta, it's like, okay, every living thing in this swamp is gonna be raining down on yeah. you. But gonna get sucked just up in that motor and get chopped act. up. You're just gonna get covered in alligator Snakes, feces. Alligators. Just imagine, just go under the water. If you feel like you just take that punch, go into the rinse off, come back up, yeah. get more fecal matter on you. Like, and they're really fighting in a swamp. I mean, there's legitimate dangers of uh, snakes and leeches and. Crawdaddies and the the pea fish, the the piranhas? insects like no the little no is that that's a, I don't know what an Amazon thing. This is canon. If it's badass, yeah. they're gonna do it. <laughs> oh, the oh, Star Trek actor. Yeah. 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 Oh. Impalement. Oh, look at his legs. They're yeah. going crazy. It's also visually kind of interesting because all the villains, all the 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 uh, pentangle, have their own little costume. Mm -hmm. One looks like the Gimp. One looks like a a, a member of the Eyes Wide Shut uh, orgy party. Oh yes, yes, yes. Um, so the, yeah, they all have their own little little like shtick. I wish there was more of that throughout the movie because it starts that way and it ends that way. And the middle is when the movie kind of sags a bit. But then the dude's voice was like, hey, "I killed you, and I, <laughs> Mr. Jack King, late of the United States Secret Service." So he sounds like Snagglepuss or something. There's some sort of Hanna Barbera Snidely character. Snidely Whiplash. That, like, I'll yeah. get you next time, Dudikoff. <laughs> <laughs> 
the, their bad. And if you're going to have a far right like community, have a salute. Like they sort that. of did. They did. Kinda. It's like there was like this, and then some people were like that. No, no, they were like, like they were like hat. They, they didn't do the full like Nazi salute. They were like, yeah, but main dude was like hitting his arm like fuck yeah, you kind of. Yeah. And then some people were like, oh my arm pits. They didn't like know what this. they were supposed to do. Yeah. They were like, Fucking are we Nazis? Uniform. <laughs> sort of if Nazis? only Kanye were there to show them how to do it properly. <laughs> I know the goddamn liberals scream fascist, but the simple truth is, Hitler was right. Man was a visionary. I, I see, I, I see good things about Hitler also. What weird times we live in. <laughs> yeah, who would have thought? Who would have thought? <laughs> you don't set a movie in Louisiana without a fight in the bayou not just the dry woods. Thank you. Thank you. And now I could leave the set. <laughs> oh, shit. Actually, your body is going to be invisible for the rest of the movie in the background. You have to lie in this mud puddle. No, we can talk about the final fight because it's an, it's an interesting idea for a fight. Yeah, they don't execute it no. perfectly. Oh, when he goes to his house? Yeah. When they go into the, specifically the ancient weapons room. Yes, I loved it. <laughs> well, he interrupts, Dudikoff interrupts the, the fancy dinner where I guess they're just hanging out with a bunch of other racists and a little cat. And uh, <laughs> they're just yeah. talking about their plans for world domination. Yeah, they're right. talking. Well, they're talking about how much they love Hitler. This is where they specifically oh, yeah. are yes. referencing Hitler for the first time in the film. Still covered in blood. He didn't even go home and change his yep. clothes. Well, he whitened his shirt a little bit. I think, you know, like, if his shirt would have dried with all the swamp on it, it wouldn't be just like blood. Mm. It'd be some dirt. Okay. Some like just you know. Have you ever rolled around in swamp water and then had it dry out? Probably found, <laughs> found some crawdaddies in his underwear, mm -hmm. a po' boy in, up in between his butt cheeks. <laughs> what the that hell is happened a to New boy. Orleans? There's all sorts of stuff floating around in the water. Oh, just hey, po' boys? Just hey, nothing but po' boys? Some, some Mardi Gras beads in D his Discarded in his bras. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like pulling it all out of his clothes. Oh, gross. Oh, God. Dry off. Go, go to his house. I thought he was going to kill that whole room of people. They, they missed a trick with this, because when the, the bad guy gets up to meet Dudikoff at the dinner, he says, I'll be back. I will return. And God, did they, did they miss an opportunity for Dudikoff to just, like, throw his body into the room? Right into the middle of the table. B before, before stepping in and telling all the dinner parties there, I'm out to get you guys yeah. next. You're next. You're ne yeah, I, yeah, they really yeah. missed a trick. Make some better choices or you're next. Spreading all over this country. Like a brush fire on a hot summer day. I'm gonna yeah. put this suit of armor on now. Give me a few moments. <laughs> that would be funny. I know you're like, here to kill me. <laughs> you can barely move <laughs> for the final fight. Dudikoff just can't defeat him. <laughs> <laughs> he just keeps hitting him with like a club yeah. and it just does nothing. It just, it's just like the ultimate draw. It just never stops. <laughs> Both get tired and fall asleep. <laughs> the next day they, they wake up and they start again. They start again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's on. Quarter staff. Oh. This movie is the ultimate, like, of peaks and valleys of boredom and excitement. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Shows he They're just going to use yeah. all the weapons. Yes! yes. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck my tables! Fuck my glass cases! But that Dudikoff fights him while well, they have a little conversation, then go up the stairs to the weapons room. Yeah. It, I think it was a little reminisce of uh, Enter the Dragon. Mm. Because, like, after the mirror room or whatever, there's, like, all the weapons and shit. And yeah. So it was, like, honky Enter the Dragon. <laughs> or, or, like, Matrix Reloaded when they fight with all the weapons yeah. in, the, in the big French mansion. Oh. You remember? Vaguely remember that film. I mean, he's talking about some kind of shit movie, Enter the Dragon. I don't know what that is. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about Matrix Reloaded. Before all a the angry comments, movie. should we make a point, uh, a sex at the bottom of the screen to make sure people understand that you do know in reality what Enter the Dragon I, well, is? Well, no. Okay. No, let, let, them, let them figure out. Let, it, let them fight. Yeah. yeah. Let, let, them, them, let, them, let them fight. I can't believe Mike's so class doesn't even know Enter the Dragon. 
Some of Bruce. Somebody. Say, what is that? A Jackie Chan movie? Jackie Chan. Movie. <laughs> Bruce Chan. <laughs> Bruce Chan. Oh, how ironic! African art. Ah. Uh, right. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, I, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Fall on him! I can't believe it. No. It's a quality death. Got a little tough on his knees after 12 takes, but. <laughs> She's through the crisis. She's coming around. She'll be traumatized for the rest of her life, but. Let me recommend a good therapist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi. But you said Canon like eventually pushed themselves to the brink where they yeah. ran out of money. They tried to take on bigger properties like Masters of, the Masters of the Universe and Superman 4. Yeah. And then do you think like this one was which phase was this like right before? <laughs> this, this was like right in the, uh, <laughs> the prime Universe period is. where they were at the like, top of their like, game. Uh, we're like spending more and more and more and this more. This money, money train is never going to end. With that fucking rain. If they, it was I mean, a rain machine. I was impressed then. with the production They used value. a rain machine, yeah. In terms of like all three of these movies, the production value in all three of these movies was pretty darn good. Yeah, I think yeah. all three of these are kind of in the like the the height of Canon's uh, uh, power, whatever you want to call it. Success. Success. They were in full bloom. Yes, yes. And this movie is like, this is what built the company. They had some more successful movies, the kind of more famous ones that we joke about, like Death Wish Three, but kind of C grade action schlock. It's not too memorable, but it's kind of fun. That 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 was their bread and butter, and Avenging Force is like right in there. It's a little unfocused, and if you focus, we we should get in a time machine and go back in time and be like consultants on canon films. Listen, Menachem. Listen, Menachem, it's not going to cost you a dime to add a little characterization to Michael Dudikoff. A couple lines of dialogue. A couple lines of dialogue, a couple scenes with a lady. They did the uh, breakdown. It would have taken like four months of having him work with an acting coach <laughs> in order to give him his character arc. And that was just too costly. You'll have your next big action film that's going to play in theaters and people are going to line around the block to watch it. It's going to be the next big thing. Trust us. You just got to make a couple tweaks to your film. I want to make Superman 4. No. Oh. oh, no. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> I want to make Masters of the Universe. Yes. He-Man was very big seven years ago. Oh. <laughs> All the kids that loved He-Man are now in college, but I'm still going to make Masters of the Universe. And maybe he had that idea at, because of uh, Ball Gag Assassin and the He-Man oh, Truss. Yeah, yeah. Is that a, the he looks harness? like a He-Man character. Yeah. A little more kinky, but... Yeah. He but we, we don't get our He-Man characters man. until the Gip next man. movie. Then we get our He-Man characters. There you go. They, yeah, that's a good segue, because they, their bodies look exactly like those He-Man action figures. <laughs> they... look, I always thought He-Man was anatomically incorrect until I saw been the proven Barbarian. Wrong by the Barbarian <laughs> Brothers. Our, our next film of the evening was The Barbarians, and I believe, Jay, you, you picked this one? I did. I pulled oh this my out God. of my stocking. It was such a shock. I didn't know what film I was getting, and there was The Barbarians. It was completely, fakely, randomly chosen <laughs> out of the three options Peter that Paul we watched three David of. Paul, The Barbarian Brothers. There's nobody. No music. No colors. Nothing. So they were hired for their acting. Right. They should have called this movie The Ooh, Acting the Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't they star in more movies? They did. They starred in a number of movies as the Barbarian Twins because I, I, I think it started with this movie and they were like trying to make that the thing. Like we're going to market them. They're going to be the next big action comedy yeah. stars you must work real hard and never say no one wasn't built in a day it went real slow schwarzenegger's huge both yeah. both both physically and successfully yeah and these guys are twice as huge physically because there's two of them <laughs> 
what could go wrong? What what could go wrong? You mean you wanna arm wrestle? They they need Austrian accents is the problem. I don't know. I, I think they're they are what save this movie. Or what make this movie, I should say. The movie itself is fine. But it starts as a very like typical kind of mid '80s sword and sorcery movie, barbarian movie. Richard Lynch. Right? Richard Lynch. Yeah. He actually thinks he's in a real fantasy movie. Everyone thinks they're in a real fantasy movie, except for the barbarian twins and their and their the little and, and girl that Kara. follows them on their adventure. <laughs> Gee, thanks. But yeah, no, and that's the interesting thing where it's it makes me wonder if like this was conceived to be just a generic barbarian movie. And then for whatever reason, Golan and Globus got in their heads like, these guys, these meatheads we met at the gym are going to be the next big action star. <laughs> Put him in your movie. Are you kidding? Oh, look at us. We're huge. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're fun to watch. It doesn't make for a good movie, but they seem to be just having a good time. And I think that that rubs off on your your viewing of it, where you're like, you know what? They're having fun. Hey, buddy. Nice eye. Uh, by the way, you know where we can buy any weapons? <laughs> <laughs> hey, got an idea. What if I said this in the scene? I'll just nice say eye. It. Hey, go. Oh. No. <laughs> say whatever you want, sir. Just don't hit me. <laughs> They need to, the comedy dial was at like two and a half. They needed to turn it up to like eight. Mm -hmm. Like my rewrite of them being like New, New Jersey gym rats who are working out late at night that get sucked into a time vortex. Because yeah. they're, they're arguing with each other like, yeah, no, no. You bonehead. What do we do? What do we do? And they, they, they sound like they're from the East Coast. They don't sound like they're from like some mystical land of whatever. Yeah. They sound dumb. Yeah, right here. There's no ruby here. I know there's no ruby here. What do you want me there's to do? There's no ruby here. No kidding, but what am I supposed to do? So no. what are we going to do? I don't know. It's like, we'll do your movie if we could just flex some muscles. And also, we love Abbott Costello. <laughs> so if we could do our version of Abbott Costello jokes. Look, I just want to lift someone above my head every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. Like Bill and Ted, like our stupid California surfer guys. Yeah. If, if Bill and Ted were bodybuilders. If Bill you and Ted were bodybuilders, equally intelligent, got thrown into some historical context. You, you make them so stupid, they think they're at the Renaissance Fair. Sure. <laughs> they're sure. never aware they're of... They're never aware. Well, that's kind of the first that half of fantasy uh, world. Uh, like Galaxy Quest, right? Where they, they're, they don't think any of this is real, mm -hmm. right? And that's where the comedy comes from. Yeah. Here, it's just, it is a straightforward kind of sword and sorcery barbarian movie with the only joke really being the anachronistic qualities of their performances. Yes. And the girl. Fourth seems wall breaking like, joke. Yeah, very like, uh, the girl is very like valley girl. Look at the size of you two. She looks oh. like a young Britney Spears and she just sounds like the girl at the mall. Yeah. yeah. I, and, think, I think she took her cues though from the Barbarian Brothers and that's the kind of movie, okay, sure. that's how they're acting, that's the tone of this movie. I'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt and she thought, well, that's, that's what I need to do. Yeah. And I'm gonna place a high value bet on the fact that the director didn't give a fuck. <laughs> Sam Furstenberg. No, this isn't Sam Furstenberg. This is uh, Sam Furstenberg, Sam Furstenberg. The middle one is, uh, uh, this is like an Italian co-production because the director is Ruggiero Diodato, famously directed the classic children's film Cannibal Holocaust. Okay. <laughs> a miracle. A miracle. The Ragnicks can choose another queen. Hurry, bring all the virgins. What? <laughs> <laughs> We're all going to get laid. Claudio Di Bergamo. <laughs> Claudio Fragasso? Claudio Fragasso. He had no idea what was going on. He didn't it's know possible. that their, their performance was, was goofy. He That's... just was like, what's going on? Where's the camera pointy? What's going on? The big, <laughs> Where's the camera pointy? The big muscle man to say the things. We, you hit me, a baby, one more time. <laughs> And, and he had no idea what they were doing. Are you saying the Barbarians were acting out a scene and he's facing another way, looking at the crew, thinking yes. the crew are like the extras? The movie, <laughs> the, yes. He thought the muscle guys were like like the guys that just like rig up all the equipment. He's, he's, he's facing the wrong way thinking, geez, I wish my key grips would put on a shirt. Right, yes. <laughs> These are the strongest on, key guys. grips I ever worked with. 
<laughs> You're distracting everybody else with your muscles. We're trying to shoot a film here. They weigh 397 kilograms. They can stomp on my grapes. Uh. <laughs> Smash my grapes on my vineyard. Do your job. The star of my movie is trying to light the set. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the axe. I want the sword. <laughs> Never mind, I want it back. I want the axe. <laughs> yeah, yes. the, the, it's, it opens with the, uh, a, a caravan of circus folk. Yep. With magical Jugglers, properties. Jugglers, fire, fire breathers, fire spitters. Uh, People, a uh, knife thrower, the practicing. Jamiroquai. They are magical creatures who have a magic ruby, the MacGuffin of the film that gives you ma some magic something. It, I don't it, know. it, it, it gives you entertainment powers. It yeah. was purchased for a mountain of gold. Because they have the magic ruby, they are given a magic tattoo that allows them to pass through any land in this world that is ruled by the power of the sword. So they're basically immune to any warring factions all over the world. They're happy entertainers that are given a free pass by anyone to travel around the world except when Richard Lynch shows up. That and so, bastard. I'm bad guy. They fight them, there's a battle scene. And to the movie's credit, all these circus folk use all their, their talents to fight the uh, the bad guys. Yes, yes, that is a fun, it's a fun sequence. It would have been a better movie if it were just about the circus troupe having to fight against I this force. I enjoyed that. Yeah. We, we had Paul Rubens wearing the Queen Amidala headdress. Yes. Uh, we had a, a whole array of colorful, wacky characters. But the point is, the Barbarian Twins, names? Paul, David, Paul, and no, Peter No, and Paul. their characters. Korgar Gor and Korgar and Glorgon. Korkuchi. Zorgon and Korgon. Korkon. Gor and Kuchak. Kuchak, the, yes. They, they are mere seven, eight-year-old boys. Yes. That then get sold off into slavery mm. by... Uh, R Richard Lynch. He, he promises guy. not to kill he them, promises. which is why the, the queen sub submits to him. Yes, but their entire lives, from age eight to age twenty-five, is is spent carrying rocks, breaking rocks in a in a in a slave mine or a, a, a work camp, mm -hmm. being whipped by Michael Berryman, <laughs> the and, dirt master, and then the they, dirt master. They come out of this situation not grizzled and angry and bitter and dark. But happy-go-lucky Jim Rats from New Jersey. And that's the joke of the movie. Our, our villain, who has promised not to kill these boys, him, neither him nor anybody under his rule is allowed to kill these children. So the clever way around that is to train them all their life to be gladiators, to put helmets on them. They've been separated since yes. they were children, so they haven't seen each other. Yet. And to have them kill each other. Mm -hmm. It and doesn't then, go so well. The subversion is they take off each other's helmets and they're just, hey! Oh, yeah, it's you! It's you! Hey, we're gonna buddy you right! Hey, 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 we're big dumb guys! Get your arms out of the way! Yeah, no shit! Your leg! That would be nuts. fucking great if they're chopping off yeah. arms. Yeah! They don't give a fuck. <laughs> give it. Oh! Oh! It's a Christmas beer <laughs> So happy. Oh! Ooh. Oh! Oh, they're conveniently not going to take these helmets off. These oh, you look like me. Stop! Stop it, please! Stop it, please! Stop! Hey, Mary, she's alive. That's right, Bonehead. And we gotta get out of here. <laughs> Bonehead! Bonehead! <laughs> I wish they established that a little bit more. Oh, they're not gonna be As children. Down. That they're goofy? Like, that they fucking want. It's like, cut it out, bonehead. <laughs> I just want to play with the scorpion. <laughs> uh, it's hamming it up. Now, I'm surprised that the dude didn't want to kill these kids after one of the kids bit off dude's fingers. Because the, 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 the queen Just promised to surrender him if he wouldn't kill them. The, the, the man, he if said, my fingers bit off, I probably would just be like, I don't know what happened. Uh, I'm in pain. It was an accident. I snapped this child's what, neck. What, what, oh, also, I live in this horrible world where everybody's a monster. Who cares if I break my word or not? Without getting crass, what did the Queen provide R R Richard well, Lynch? Nothing. This movie is not fully thought through. Because he, he was the second of his harem. He called it his harem. 
Mm. But unlike the other women in his harem that just kind of laid around in a big pile and slept on each other, she was specifically kept in a cage. But but it was like it wasn't there was as this... blatant with the rape as most barbarian movies are. Yes, that's true. It was kind of like a PG barbarian movie. But he didn't. I guess today they were like presser about the ruby. Like who we'll teach you to defy the sorceress? <laughs> Where is the magic ruby? Me? Oh, it's been ten years. <laughs> now just getting around to asking her. They do this every day <laughs> for ten years. We don't. It, it's important. He seems to want it. We don't know why he wants it. Why? Why does this villain who already is in charge of his empire want a gem that will make you more entertaining at parties? He yeah. just wants to be a juggler. <laughs> he's he's he like, just, I'm sick of being the one at the table, should, should, not should, saying anything while I'm eating his soup. Should, <laughs> should, should this movie have gone full comedy? Should there have been scenes with Richard Lynch and he's got like juggling pins and he's, <laughs> he just keeps trying, but he just can't Son do it. Of a bitch. Damn it. <laughs> He's really good at being like a like an evil dictator monster, but but he's he, not good at oh, entertaining. Oh, yeah. he, he keeps he keeps forcing his, hen his his underlings to watch his stand up comedy routines, <laughs> and then and then if you don't laugh, you get beheaded. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is there's a lot in this movie that we're just not sure if they're supposed to be jokes that didn't land or not. Yeah. So if they're going for comedy, they missed the mark because there's a. When they go into the, the, the lair to get the, the gem, we, we keep seeing glimpses of this monster that's following them. Oh, and yeah. It, it's, it's lurking in the background, and we see its eyes. They keep and it's it's built up to this, yeah. what you think is going to be an epic encounter with this wolf monster. Oh, my God. It's a wolf man. Oh! oh. <laughs> Whoa! He just wanted to be your friend! Oh, my oh. God. That was it? And they just cut his head off right away, and it's no problem. Immediately. Arms coming and, out of it. And then mock his like, corpse. And then they mock it. He's like holding it up, making it bark. Yeah. And... <laughs> Jesus. Let's let this go on for 10 minutes. She was smiling like that was just like an outtake. They're just goofing yeah. around. Yeah. Was that a poorly executed joke where the. the the confrontation they've been building up to was an anticlimax. Maybe. Maybe the red ruby. Yes. Was put inside the eye of, like a a, a, a stone snake sculpture. Yes. That was protected by the dragon. Yes. And in order for them to go get the ruby, they had to get weapons. Remember? So they go yeah. to that like d disgusting the bar thing where all the, the people. The medieval are. strip club. The medieval strip club yeah. where there was a, a contortionist dancing on a stage covered with 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 fur. <laughs> They desperately need weapons. <laughs> they beat up some people, and then they find magic weapons somewhere, and then the bad guys beat them too. I guess the evil The uh, bad guys evil didn't Lynn. get the sacred weapons, so Evil Lynn and Michael Barrymore aren't able to defeat the dragon. Barry they get eaten Barry Basha. He's not related Dirt to... Uh, Your best friend Drew Barrymore. To Drew, yeah. yeah. And Which so they, is, that an, is that another joke? Here's here's two of our main villains, and our heroes don't even have a confrontation with them. They just get eaten by a dragon off screen. Was yeah. that was that supposed to be a joke? Oh. Uh, <laughs> dragon. Guest director <laughs> Sam Raimi. <laughs> they're going oh, they're inside. Going inside. And then Evil Lynn, uh, aka Evil Lynn. I don't know what else to call her. Evil Lynn. Richard. Oh, Richard. Um, China. She had they call her China. China is her name. China, yeah. which was confusing because we thought they were talking about China. <laughs> Richard Hatch, for some reason, has uh, an Evil Lynn. And then at the end, she gets sucked up by the dragon, and then our barbarians go inside the dragon's mouth and find her. 
And did, is that when they get the red ruby yeah. from yep. her? Oh, yeah, because it's in her hand. Dead. It's in, in her hand. Inside yeah. the dragon. Not chewed up. I guess the dragon no. just swallowed her whole. And yeah, killed her. Sure Maybe she had a heart attack from the weird experience. <laughs> it's like a boa constrictor. It swallows you whole and then just digests it. Yeah, but got she's not being out. constricted. The dragon swallows her whole. She has plenty of room. Stomach acid. But now she's just dead. There's, a, there's no oxygen inside the dragon. She she passed out. Okay. She died of embarrassment. Now it's time to talk about the smooch herd around the world. <laughs> Rich, <laughs> tell us all about barbarian Smooth. incest. Well, <laughs> well, this is this is what happened. <laughs> that was such a smooth transition from what we were talking about. I know. I want to talk about it. I've been waiting to talk about it. Oh. 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 I guess you were kind of right. <laughs> yeah. That's, a, yeah. That's yeah. very unfortunate. No, we're only supposed to suck dick. <laughs> Can we do that again in a different situation? Okay. Oh, we knew these guys wanted to kiss each other from the get-go. <laughs> they, 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 I mean, they're living out the McNamara brothers' biggest fantasy, really. Because there's a bit of the movie. To fuck but, yourself? <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> yes, it's the ultimate narcissism. These guys are who the McNamara brothers wish they were. These guys are bigger, yes. they're funnier, and they go full force and kiss each other they're, on the they're, mouth. They're younger, they're stronger, <laughs> they're handsomer, and they're not Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> they are the McNamara's dream come true. Yeah, yeah. And they they actually can fuck each other. <laughs> the McNamara's can't due to a contractual obligation. Well, Who made this contract? Movie. They did. <laughs> Their mother did. My Rich, tell us all about the kiss heard around the world. <laughs> well, they, 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 it's, a, it's a trope in movies that when like the, the, the guy and girl who don't necessarily like each other are forced to work together, but they don't want to get noticed by the guards because oh, their yeah. faces are recognizable. Yes. So the guards walk by and, oh, they start kissing. And the guards will see our faces. And so the joke is the two brothers are standing next to each other when the guards come by. So, oh, oh, no, we have to kiss each other. And... That was done as a joke, but I, I, I think they got uncomfortable about being seen as gay. <laughs> so immediately after this, there's like f five not gay scenes where they <laughs> run just in, oogle boobs. They just they just run into the, the bad guy's harem and just ravishes his, his girls all night long. Right after, <laughs> right after. But even yeah, before yeah. that, it's before not even that. the next scene. It's, it's not the even next the next scene. Second. Yeah. Because they kiss each other, and then there's just a tent of yep. naked women for no yeah. reason. Oh, you're right. Yeah. You're right. And it's they just oogle boobies, yeah. so they're they're not so that they That's confirm right. that like they're not gay. And then they, and then they the actually hole. looked at the camera and said, "We're not gay. Yeah. Look, boobies." Uh, uh, uh. So the 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 uh, ultimate climax of the film, the showdown between the barbarians and Richard Lynch. <laughs> What a lame! <laughs> like he, he, oh. he forgot he was missing two fingers on one hand. Oh. That's what happened. He went to pull the trigger. Oh. And he pull the trigger. That's seriously? Yes, yeah, seriously. That's what happened. Oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> That's a wonderful that didn't even register with me. I the, forgot about the fingers. That's the perfect combination of clever and stupid. <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> After a while, you, you feel phantom fingers. Yeah, because like they did it. They did it. They've never reiterated the fingers thing since the very beginning, no. so I completely forgot about it. They, they should have set it up a little more. And he completely forgets that <laughs> he lost his trigger He's finger right. 11 years ago. <laughs> Right after Grasp. it happened, he had some kind of thing on his hand, but then after that, they... You just forget about it. Yeah. Kinda, yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe that was, to them, that was the payoff. You, this thing that happened at the beginning of the movie, you know, the, 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 Citizen Kane says Rosebud in the beginning. <laughs> we don't hear about it till the fucking end, right? <laughs> yeah. The weird thing is, though, like, it's been 11 years. You'd think he would have learned that he doesn't have fingers anymore by then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that's the Barbarians. I don't know. I, uh, I I know these guys did some other movies that were all like cheapo garbage. They did not become the next Schwarzenegger. Think big. No don't about You got to think big. No don't about it. And it's good that a brother found out. It's just like 
I don't really want this thing. I want the other thing. But then again, he really wants my thing. <laughs> so I'm mean, gonna have fun with it. And he's gonna be like, give me that, I want that. And then he's gonna give me his thing. I'm gonna make that seem more fun. That was like, they thought that was such a good joke that that, that becomes the capper to the whole movie. That's right. Comedy in twos. <laughs> <laughs> the Barbarians. I want the brain. Oh, here they go. I don't like the rain. I don't like the rain. Good. I like the brain better. <laughs> it's like the sword! Ah! <laughs> Get out! <laughs> We're done. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. That's it. We're done. Wow. The movie stopped. How did I fall? If I won't. We're back, everybody. And, and we're back. We've, we've got our, our, our final movie, and it's probably one of the most famous sequel names of all time. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and now it's unfortunately... It was unfortunately co-opted, co-opted by extremists. By extremists, so please... How, how does anyone expect to be taken seriously when they wear Hawaiian shirts? I don't know. There's a reason Weird Al doesn't write serious music. But fuck those guys. <laughs> uh, Tim, tell us about Breaking 2. Electric, electric Boogaloo. Boogaloo, boy. It's Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> it's, it's a Blu-ray. That's right. They did that on the box. Read read that. <laughs> Wait, is it on the box? It is. Yeah. Electric I thought you were just making a terrible joke. But the box made the terrible joke. Electric Boogaloo, yeah. Blu-ray. Electric Boogaloo. Well, uh, <laughs> man, when did the first one like, come this out? Is, it's the title of the canon documentary, Electric Boogaloo. It's, it's the most famous sequel subtitle of all time. It's this and the Squeakwool. Those are the two that everybody goes to when they talk about like joke sequel titles. Yes, the, the movie is more famous for its name than the movie it is. Yeah. Well, that's because the movie, if you watch it, it all just blends together into like a fever dream of dancing and nonsense. Dancing in 80s fashion. Yeah, yeah. Attempts at creating 80s fashions. (laughs) I feel like some of the things in this movie were not actually fashion, but they wanted it to become a thing. Give us the plot. Okay, okay, okay. He wants to do the movie justice. Uh, Chicken head, give us the plot. Let him him think about it. So It's an important story. If, you know, uh, breaking introduced the three main characters of Kelly, Ozone, and Turbo. Kelly from a very affluent uh, 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 a family and all that stuff, and Ozone just, and Turbo from the streets. God damn it, what? just shut the fuck up and let the man tell the plot of Electric Boogaloo. I just wanted to hit up on Breaking Break into first. Electric Boogaloo, he's trying to t- tell the plot. I want to know if he's seen Breaking One. But uh, he's seen breaking. breaking the Waves. It's very similar. <laughs> I saw okay, so point just break. shut up. I've seen Point Break. I saw Point Break. Uh, point it's, Breaking. It's bad, unlike Breaking Bad, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen I've seen Breaking Bad. Breaking the Waves to Electric Boogaloo. Okay, it's, it's a good film. <laughs> Tim, tell us all about. Okay, Rich wants to know if you've seen Breaking One. <laughs> nope. Okay. So, Breaking Two Electric Boogaloo. Yeah, tell us hey, all about it. Hey, I wanted to watch it because it's like Boogaloo is a fun word to say when you're a child. And electric? Anything better is plugged in. It's electric. Boogie, oogie, oogie. <laughs> but anyway, this is the follow up story. It's like at the end of Breaking. They're just like, wow, Kelly and Ozone and Turbo overcame so many like hurdles. You're and assuming. They're friends. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm know. assuming. I'm assuming. I'm assuming. <laughs> what happens in Breaking One? They they break. I haven't here. I haven't seen Breaking One, but I'm gonna tell you what happens in Breaking One. Oh. Uh, she's an, uh, an uptight, preppy, rich girl whose whose parents have her life plotted out for her. Who and does who does Princeton. fancy dancing? And, yeah, she she well, she, yes. yeah. she sees people fancy dancing on the street, and her parents scoff at it. But she's secretly intrigued by it. And then, then no, no, no. She does she fancy does, dancing. She That's does high level no, no, dancing. Not in, not in breaking one. In breaking one, she's oh my god. He doesn't know what so, fancy dancing he's is. He's so fucking dense. Rich, fan, we're, fancy sorry. dancing is traditional dancing. She does. Oh, breaking oh. is the cool yeah, dancing. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're fancy right. as in as in highbrow, upper yeah. crust, yes, snooty. Yes. She does. She does pirouetting. She does ballet. Oh, ballet. How does she definitively meet Turbo and Ozone in this movie that we have not seen? 
she she falls out of her parents' limo when they take a turn <laughs> that's a too sharp of a turn. Oh, it's kind of like overboard. Yes. Overboard. She is Goldie Hawn, falls off into Kurt Russell's she, or Ozone's Did she hit house. her head and lose her memory? She rolls on the ground and hits her head on a fire hydrant. Instead of calling. I, I remember that. I remember that happening in this movie. She I wakes up seen. in a warehouse where everyone's breaking. And she's like, I don't have dance. I don't know who I am, but I know how to dance. <laughs> Are you Dr. Death? And she's like, no, I'm Turbo. And then at the end, they defeat the the bad dance troupe. Because we, we can't introduce the soulless she's, corporate male. She really male. gets into the yeah. dancing culture, but then she starts to remember who she is. And she has, to, she has to make the choice between, you know, what her parents want her to do and the dancing that she has learned to love so much. Oh, so kind of like break in two, Electric Boogaloo. Yeah, well, this is a, this is, I mean, this is a typical sequel where yeah. they just do the same it's thing. Just bigger, but bigger, 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 yeah. yes. Yeah. Hi. Is that Kelly? Yeah, I've really missed you. Looks like showbiz been treating you good. Yeah, well, actually, I'm pretty burnt out. <laughs> What's he sweeping? Hustling for pennies. Hi. All right, Kelly's back. All right, hey, that's Fred. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> she's well liked. Everybody loves her. Ah, <laughs> oh, the mailman's into it. Everyone's breaking. Oh, the telephone operator. <laughs> Man, everyone's going the fucking crazy. <laughs> Look at everybody's. They're, they're all, all they're ages all, and races. They're all dancing together. They're all brought together by the power of bad music. <laughs> I mean, if that's what it takes to bring people together, it's a fair trade off. <laughs> Even the cars dance. <laughs> and we'll start with breaking two. The story of Kelly showing up to Miracle. Now Miracle is a nice uh, building that lets all the, the, the neighborhood kids go and break and dance. Yeah. And riff -raff. Just And riffraff and like- They and love the dancing. Tag. It's they like they a community love, center. Yes, it's a community center. Miracles is a place that it's like, this is street. It's like all these kids on the street, there's no way that they are gonna be able to get together and be happy and like not cause problems. That would be a miracle. Holy shit, there's a building where that happens. Absolutely. Boing. <laughs> miracle. So miracle, let me get this straight. Miracle is a building mm -hmm. where yeah. the children go inside yes. to do what the children ordinarily do outside on the street. Yes. yes. Or, or in hospitals. They do it pretty but much anywhere. Or, or on there. a tractor trailer. Hey, come on, let's turn the music up. Good chance to keep that energy up. <laughs> Why isn't you dancing? Why isn't you dancing? Come on now. Do, do you need to ask that question? <laughs> Feel the beat. Feel the beat. He's into it. Ah, oh, my back! Miracle is is a building that's owned by the city, but the caretaker is our is our elderly black man named. I don't know his name. I just uh, am very proud of myself for recognizing from recognizing him from uh, Ghetto Blaster, a movie we watched 26 years ago. Yeah. Whoever you are, you got no business coming around here with that equipment. This is a deep hole, but I think that old guy might have been in. Do you remember Ghetto Blaster? Of course. That we did on the show a million years ago. I still vividly remember the old guy that's like, what are you doing to my cat? What are you doing to my cat? I recognize his voice, because I always have that in my brain. The, what are you doing to my cat? What are you doing to my cat? <laughs> so anyway, Ghetto Blaster runs miracles. He and does. then Ozone and Turbo are like, we love this place too. And look at him, we're we. They we welcome can... all kinds of dancers. Yeah. And half little kids. Mimes. A mime, yes. A mime with a half. He half only mimes. did the mouth. Yeah. You know they're tolerant when they accept mimes. Right. And, yeah. and they do all like all sorts of dancing, but they do have a rival dance gang. Electro. Okay, which which ones? Uh, which ones? Neutron and which ones? Rage. Proton? Electro rage. Electro rage. <laughs> Electro rage. Which ones? Ne neutron and proton. Hi. Oh, what's up? O ozone is the tall one because yeah. he's the so older tall. The older tall one who's, who's He can who's... be up in the ozone. Okay, like... that's a good way to remember. And the other one is Turbo because he went really fast when he fell down those stairs. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ozone is in love with Kelly. Yes. I thought they were in a relationship. The movie starts and she shows up and they're immediately smooching. Yeah. I thought they were like, oh, they're a couple. I thought they were the couple that got together at the end of Breaking One. Yeah, me too. I bet Turns out she has a fiance. I bet they, they ended in a kiss in Breaking One. They did, remember? When we watched that film? Yeah. Oh, Breaking One? Yeah. 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 But Turbo is the younger guy, the one who ends up dancing on the ceiling. Yep. Yeah. Um, and he is in love with Latino girl. <laughs> yes. Who is, is part of a different is. subculture of dancers. Yeah. Who dance on a stage. Remember? Yeah. yeah. In front of. And he's like, I don't speak your language. Mike, you can just say there's a stage and we'll know they dance on it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's in love. So, so there's multiple factions, <laughs> multiple uh, ethnicities, um, groups, all at, at, all in Los Angeles. And they all dance. And they all love to dance and they, they just want to dance. I'm picturing like the real world audio. <laughs> Someone that far away it just looks like a bunch of insane people. Oh, oh. This would be a great though. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, shreds. Shreds, yeah. <laughs> to be fair, it is kind of a beautiful harmony. We never really see Earth in Star Trek, but I imagine this is what they're doing. They, just they, nonstop they, dancing. Just nonstop yeah. dancing. And even even their gang fight was 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 rather beautiful. It's they, all this they, dancing. They just said, you know what? We don't need violence. We just we're going to sell our differences with dance, whether it's interpretive on us. Well, we were talking about that during that scene. Yeah. We we're like, is this supposed to be metaphorical yes. or interpretive? A musical. A musical. Yeah, yeah, like a musical. Uh, but later on, when uh, Boogaloo Shrimp, a.k.a. Turbo. Turbo, Turbo, is dancing on the ceiling. Yes. The, oh, what the, his, his love interest comes into the room and she's like, what the fuck? So I think all the dancing is literal. Oh. He's going to the wall. There it goes. Camera tricks. Let's see it through the Yeah, there's like a hole in the yeah, wall yeah. and you can see through it. Oh, are we gonna get a split screen? I just, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it's like that oh, look at that. What? What? It's really happening. It's not just his imagination. How did they do it? A shitload of hairspray uh, yeah. and a harness. Yeah. See, not out of any crazy ass movie thing to cause a romantic or sex scene to happen. <laughs> This is it. The room, rotating room. Oh, oh just on a technical level. It's yeah. just yeah. fucking. It's just fucking awesome. In a yeah. in a goofy movie, that is a great effect. Yeah, yeah. it looks great. It's fun, and they, they, they even have like uh, like occasionally they cut to because there's a uh, what you call a it skylight. Ceiling. skylight. There's a skylight, and you know we see him dancing on it, and it almost looks like a like a break dancing mat or something. But then we cut to the exterior. They take the effort the to shoot through the window. They took the time to shoot that. Totally different setup. Yeah. Okay, here's something that happened in Breaking One. Oh. Okay. Turbo dances with a broom. Mm. <laughs> Look it up. You mentioned that because yeah. you thought it happened. Because I this thought one, it right? happened. It might, it's like I've I've only seen oh, bits I, and pieces. I thought you went back to making up stuff that happened in Breaking One. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think that's sure a famous Breaking scene from the first one, movie. Turbo famous. dances with a broom, and so they're like, "Holy shit! How do we, we just top got that?" Cannon is on the phone. They want to make a Breaking Two. Wow, we gotta fucking top Turbo in his broom. <laughs> Use a vacuum. Spinning room, bitch. Do you remember the scene when? Uh, Ozone is, uh, Turbo comes to Ozone for help with ladies. He's like, I'm in love with this Mexican girl. Mm -hmm. Dance I, with my doll. I have oh, a doll, yeah. I have a, Ozone is a doll of Kelly. <laughs> Looks suspiciously like Kelly. It has, has kind of a worn out crotch area. <laughs> <laughs> talk about Why is there a slimy hole oh, It's kind of it? like a version of uh, Kelly. Kind of looks like her haircut. Oh, they, see, yeah. yeah. That's why they did that, so they could transition oh, to a real person. No. Did she, may she, did she refuse to be in the scene? <laughs> they had to replace her with a doll. Yeah. She was supposed to show him how to dance with a lady. Wait well, a minute. That's getting all weird now. I'm tripping. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I dropped acid about <laughs> two hours ago, and now you're with my woman. <laughs> 
Mm. How? Mm. How bizarre! <laughs> oh! oh no, I oh, broke it! Oh, oh. Now can you flash back to the real women in their blood? Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Stop! Now here they realize they don't oh, need no woman. That's why. Yeah. And then they're dancing, and then it keeps like intercutting to like other real they life get characters. Jealous. And then yeah. the doll falls apart. I mean, all bets are off. <laughs> Reality is bending. It's a musical. <laughs> it's it's an action film. It it's almost a drama. doesn't. You, it's everything. Yeah, you do. You, it kind of like like one musical number or one dance scene bleeds into the next, where they just sort of like dissolve the music, and it just keeps going, and it becomes like. A fever dream. Mm -hmm. It just keep. They just keep dancing. A fever dream where developer Ron Johnson uh, <laughs> wants to build a supermarket or, or, or a, a, a mall. mall of sorts. It's a mall. Then just later they sure say a supermarket. He's an '80s corporate villain. The villain. We can just assume he wants to build something on yeah. property. Oh. oh. Developers. Is that one of the pentangles? <laughs> oh, the pentangles. Oh, Is that the, the fifth pentangle member? It's the fifth pentangle. If you put the entire cast in a lineup and you're like, pick the fucking curmudgeon who wants to change everything, 100% <laughs> would be like, that guy. He's a crusty old white guy in a suit yeah. whose dentures are falling out. And the, the plot of the movie is like five minutes of the movie. Like if you were to condense. Oh, that early scene, remember? Oh yeah, they're like, get in, get out. We need more dancing. I want to build that shopping center. I want to build it on the site that we talked about. And that building that the kids are in, well, that has got to go. <laughs> <laughs> it almost feels like parody. <laughs> I want zoning's cooperation. Get the plot scene out of the way as quickly as possible. Although, as four grown-ups who are into our 40s, we look at this through different lenses and we say, well, maybe the mall's a good idea. <laughs> The cynical nature, like you can't just dance <laughs> forever in a building that's about to be condemned. That job's gonna help you a lot more than dancing is. The only sad thing is, Rich, as yep. I know, they're not gonna they're not gonna use like violence or anything. To, <laughs> it's not gonna turn into an action movie. It's just going to be like they're going to win a dance competition or something. If it started like this and it turned into Death Wish 3? Yes, yes. Yeah. I thought you were going to say the sad thing is they're not actually going to tear down this building <laughs> so that businessmen can finally build a shopping mall. <laughs> I mean, it would be great if they started tearing it down while they're all in there dancing. Oh, my God! And just like, like peons with machine guns come in and just start mowing everyone down. Is that why they call it breaking? Breaking, yeah. <laughs> And, the, and the, the few that survived have to, like, defeat him at the top of his skyscraper. Oh, God, they have, like, a, a, a dancing kung fu battle. Yeah. <laughs> like, the girl, she's like, I'm going to choose between Princeton or the hanging cliche. out at the, yeah. <laughs> the abandoned building with my friends who dance. It's about to collapse. The building's about to collapse. <laughs> uh, I know your dad's supposed to be the villain. I know, but, but, but he's, he's right about he's, Princeton. He's, he's, Right, you should go to Princeton. And go you have, to Princeton. You, know. you have your dream job in Paris, yeah. or you can slum it up in the literal <laughs> slum. <laughs> but Stanley tells me that you backed out of that Paris deal in order to run off with that that uh, street dancer. Yes, my friends badly need two hundred thousand dollars, so I quit my job you want me to take, so I could help them. If only somebody would give them two hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> I would be able to take that job. I'll bail out miracles. Oh! You thought you were smarter than the movie. <laughs> you were wrong. <laughs> Princeton or end up on Skid Row? <laughs> Tough choice. Not a, not a hard choice. <laughs> I mean, Miracles is only going so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In the long, long term. Take care of ourselves. We don't need your money. Yes, yeah, you, you do. do. <laughs> You desperately do, or the city will demo the building. I said all those characters, all the way down to the five-year-olds, they're all going to end up on Skid Row. Ozone's going to be cheating on you with that other girl in like five months. In five, <laughs> six months. Someone's going to start doing heroin where the, the mir miracle is. Is there a new drug that makes you dance? 
Well, if they if that if that exists, they're already taking it and breaking <laughs> too because these people are are lunatics. Well, that's the reveal we get in breaking through. That they're all taking this drug that makes you dance. <laughs> dance a say, hall. It's not even a pill. <laughs> you break, drink it. Breaking three withdrawal. <laughs> I was going to say this movie. Withdrawal in the dance hall. Not, not drug related, but oh, withdrawal in the dance hall. That's good. <laughs> this movie feels like a like a virus movie, and the virus is dancing, and it just is contagious, <laughs> and it, it's like a zombie film, but it with dancing. It feels bones spread. within days. There's that too. We should mention the hospital scene, which is the best That's part the of the best film. That's the best scene in the film. Yeah. It's, it's, Now, Jim, the uh -oh. <laughs> uh, start dancing in the. Uh -oh. oh my god! The Crip power of dance is healing him! The alien was gonna pop out. Sweat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Oh, I can still dance with right. <laughs> 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 The power of dance can't stop him. Oh my god, everybody. Oh no! Oh my god, oh, wow! Sexy nurses? Sexy nurses? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> They're gonna cut back to him coming to life, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just like fucked the dead dude. Ah, uh, he's just <laughs> dead. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. No. The power of dance is brought back. He's gonna back. dance. This is amazing. This has gone off the rails. <laughs> what happened? So the ticking clock is they've been given 30 days grace period to come up with $200,000 $200, to make desperately needed structural repairs to the building to make it up to code. Yeah. So the obvious way to do this is to have a dance concert. And then it's like the, the media shows up and they confront the, the builder and he's like, oh, yes, my building company, Douglas Building Company, uh, uh, I'm, I'm out. We of the Douglas Construction Company feel we won't disrupt the community. We will withdraw from the project. Oh, oh. Well. Did it, it's the power of dance. That was so anticlimactic. It was less dance and more just standing in front of the construction you equipment. To, to lead up to the big show. Yeah. It's teaching you that you don't solve a problem, you just pout <laughs> and ob ob obstruct, and then the problem solves itself. It needed to be the big moment where they need the, the dance number to win the competition, they, and they need the help of Turbo, they, and they, then he just bursts out of his cast, yeah. power of music, yes. <laughs> and there's this like, spectacular outfit on under his hospital gown for some reason. He yeah. just he rips off, and he starts dancing. That's how you end the movie. Why don't you tell him about it? They tried to raise money, they didn't we get there, and then they did right? nothing. Wait, they're still doing the show? The day before the big dance concert. So like before the climax of the movie, for some reason, the writers have chosen to completely de-escalate the threat. <laughs> yes. I think that's so you don't have to worry about it. If you're watching the movie and you're worried, you're actually invested in the plot and you're worried about, oh, will they make it? Now that's not a problem, so you can just enjoy the dancing. And just watch, you can the, just watch enjoy the spectacle. make all the money. I think that's the idea, even though uh, in story terms, yeah, it's, it's bizarre. They needed a story. And then they had it, and then they, they like resolved they just, it. They just let it go. You think too logically about movies. You think too like, you think too movies about movies. <laughs> you think like, nothing here. That's happens. our job. I know, but no, I'm saying like you, you are like the guy that writes the '80s movies, mm -hmm. but these are not those movies. These all have like the facade. These do of the being opposite a movie. of logic. These are like, you look at them from a distance and it looks like a movie, yeah. but then you think about it and nothing adds up. No! They're the I Monets just... of movies. <laughs> I really just love the fact that Breakin' and Breakin' 2 
gave the positive messages of a community forward MC Ice T. A quarter, a nickel, or even a dime. Everybody in a place, sing along with me. Everybody in a place, G I B E. Yeah. And Good old was, Ice T shows up just, in this. It's just like he's, nailing he's, it with positivity. I'm like, this guy's gonna go places. He's gonna work with the community and he's gonna make sure everybody stays clean. And this is 1984, so you know he's got. Oh. Got your love. He was going with the flow, whatever was popular at the time. Break dancing, gangster rap. I gotta say that uh, a lot of the skills of breaking, from breaking to breaking to to today, mm. has come leaps and bounds. Mm. Because I mean, that, dancing that, skills? Are you talking oh, about? Yeah, yeah. 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 Have you seen like some like you should just look up some um, like robot like dancing. And you gotta wiggle your hands around like it's cool. Did Breaking 2 come out too late for the fad? Probably. It was probably like slightly after the fad had started to die. What year is what, this? What, what, year, what year was Star Trek 3? Because there was a lot of Klingons 80. fucking popping and locking. <laughs> 80, Dancing on 80, the ceiling. Uh, 86 was Star Trek 4. It would have been 80, 83. 4, I'm assuming. 83, 84. 83, 82. Search for Spock was 82. Yeah, so I think it's 83 is, is Star Trek 3. I, I saw this during its theatrical run. What? Here's a right here, yeah. Electric Breaking, 2? I've seen Breaking 2, Electric Boogaloo. You in did? On the, the theater? No, in the oh. drive-in theater. What? It was playing as a double feature with Star Trek 3. And so the family night, I wanted to see Star Trek 3. What to see Star Trek 3? And they played Breaking 2 first. And I had to sit through Breaking 2 and I was just like, God, I, I just, where the fuck is Spock? <laughs> I want to find Spock already, God damn it. I'm what? sitting through. Breaking 2 was the real search for Spock. What if? <laughs> what if you watch it that's like the fucking, like, listening to The Wizard of Oz, uh, The Dark Side you? of the Moon, but you need to watch Breaking 2 <laughs> into the search for Spock, yeah. and there's going to be something, something that is like, well, yeah, yeah, you'd play the, the, the audio from Breaking 2 while <laughs> watching search, search for Spock. Spock. It lines up. It all lines up. But did you think while you're watching Breaking Two that someday when you when you were 56 you'd be talking about it on a on a bright green table <laughs> to the internet like would wearing a dumb I, Christmas hat? I thought, wearing a Christmas hat. Like, I thought, thank God, I'll never need to watch this again. Okay. <laughs> there it is. There it is. There it is. It happened. What a magical movie memory. Yeah! <laughs> that, yeah? Through his movements, he's gonna go take a piss. <laughs> I feel like I'm in the movie. <clears throat> oh yes, I guess I am in charge here. Uh, we're, we're at the, <laughs> the end of the night. It is time. I, I, I guess we'll go around. Uh, Tim, what is your pick for best of the worst? I will have to go uh, Barbarians. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid hilarity and like great practical effects, but boy, did I call at least three or four things in that movie. <laughs> and I'm pretty fucking proud of that. Put these up. <laughs> <You're> proud. <laughs> so, yeah, barbarians. <laughs> Doink. Okay. I, I guess it's up to me then. I'm, I'm kind of on the fence. I'm actually, I'm almost a three way split. Ooh, I'm a two-way split, yeah. not a three-way. Yeah, yeah. I, there's stuff I appreciate about all of these movies for 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 being a try-hard movie that doesn't quite get there. It's being just something that's kind of just bizarre, the goofy goofy leads, really goofy leads, and just all around what the fuck. And then electric boogaloo. <laughs> electric boogaloo. I'm just gonna. You know what, just, just to keep things evenly distributed, I'm just gonna go with Avenging Force. <laughs> okay. Just, just to keep things evenly distributed so we can have some excitement mm. for who the actual winner is. Mm. So uh -oh. Avenging Force is definitely the most canon movie. Yes. Like when you think of what a canon movie is, it's that. <laughs> so uh, Jay, what is your pick? Uh, mine's Electric Boogaloo. 
I thought Ow! about it for, for five seconds and I decided the, the, the hospital scene is just so fun. It's so entertaining to watch. It's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. And it's colorful and I enjoyed it. Mike. I'm with Jay. Electric Boogaloo is my pick all the way. I'm, I'm kind of glad you went with that. Even though I picked Avenging Force just to keep things even. Well, the, the thing is, all three movies are all pretty good. Mm -hmm. They're all, they all kind of do a mm -hmm. thing, but just on just the most basic level, I think I had the most fun watching Electric Boogaloo. I, I still hated it. I hated all three. <laughs> In, in there. I took a good stand. I did. In. I did because you're just like, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you doing that? Like, <laughs> avenging force. Just, uh, you know, so much potential. They yeah. spent so much money. Great, great, like Mardi Gras action. The the, the swamps and the rain, and mm. you just need to fix this character. Barbarians. Like, is it a comedy? Is it not? What are you doing? This. It's the same thing. It's like. You're trying to make a like a fun like musical, but you're just kind of like vague, vaguely giving the choreography and the music, and it's it's just sort of like all no music stands out in a musical, yeah. and that's weird. Yes, exactly. There's nothing fun musical fun. The about dancing's it. great, but none of the music really stands yes. out. Yes, it, uh, overall it's mostly embarrassing, and it's and it's, <laughs> but like there are many standout moments. My my recommendation is just go look up clips for the hospital scene and the spinning room scene. And then you've gotten everything you need to get out of Breaking 2. I don't know, I think if you watch it from start to end, it, it has like some sort of weird psychological effect on you because mm. it's just, ne they never stop dancing. Yeah, you get drawn into it. And it's it not like, like a musical, there, there'll be a musical number and then there's plot happening, plot happening, characters, there's scenes happening and then another musical number. This one, it's just nonstop dancing. A good, a good musical will develop the characters through the song. That's, yeah, that's the goal. That as well. The yes. problem is everything was like laid out in super fine detail in breaking. <laughs> and we fucking threw out breaking. We're just like, give <laughs> us the fucking rough. <laughs> we didn't even need the just, sequel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like Jaws 2. <laughs> we didn't need the sequel. <laughs> the shark blew up in the first one. <laughs> you son of a bitch. And the fourth one. For no reason, it blew up. The they stabbed it, and it blew up. <laughs> and that's the end of the movie. It got impaled on the mast of the ship as it and jumped. Somehow it blew <laughs> jumped up. Jumped into the air. <laughs> <laughs> then it exploded. Uh, but I don't, I, I, I don't want to destroy any of these films. I don't know about you guys. I, they all have a special place in my heart until, <laughs> until I'll give tomorrow. A strong when, wig. Until tomorrow when I forget all about them. That's fine. Tomorrow. Strong wig. Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow? Yeah. Wait, what did we watch? Oh, it I is tomorrow. That. Yeah. That, that'd be the first time you remembered something for more than three hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt. Maybe tomorrow. I, I think Electric Boogaloo has so many images that'll be just imprinted in your brain. I'll tell you, I'll tell you this. What, what tonight really did make me want to do is watch the Electric Boogaloo documentary. I have a major itch to watch that now. That is a great documentary, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we recommend that if you haven't seen it. Watch Electric Boogaloo, The Untold Story of Canon Films, yeah. Yeah. I think well, is the good. title. That's good. We hear from Lucinda Dickey from Breaking 2. We hear from Michael Dudikoff. I don't think the Barbarian Brothers are in it. Have a Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Happy, happy New you're, uh, uh, since, uh, we're done. We're done here. <laughs> you gotta cut it on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. ゲストのものすごい迫力に圧倒されなかなか言い出せないタモリさんにご注目